every camera sensor uh, has its own pros and cons uh, if you're a landscape photographer. Uh, you have Micro Four Thirds, uh, APS-C, full frame, medium format, and every camera has its own uh, capabilities or its own specialties. And I'm using a Micro Four Thirds sensor, and that is um, uh, not a deliberate choice. I've always used Olympus cameras, and uh, eventually uh, they ended up with Micro Four Thirds uh, sensors. But I just started to love this system. And in today's uh, video, I want to talk to you about all those benefits that the Micro Four Thirds uh, third system brings to me. So uh, let's dive into this video and uh, I will tell you all about this sensor. Like I said, every system has its own pros and cons, and you just have to uh, ask yourself which system suits your type of photography best. And if I look for myself, uh, the Micro Four Thirds system uh, suits me really well. And I think that is uh, the, the main reason for it. And that's, I think, the biggest selling point of the Micro Four Thirds system. It's just the uh, size of your camera and your lenses. And if I just look at uh, this beast here, for example, this is a 100 to 400 lens. So that's a full frame equivalent of 200 to 800. Um, if you would have taken a lens like this on a full frame camera, it would have been twice the size and twice the weight. Um, quality wise, uh, I think it, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, uh, photograph you're taking. But the main advantage is when you're using uh, lenses like this, I don't have to uh, choose in the morning what kind of subject I am going to photograph. I can take a whole range of lenses from my, let's say this 7 millimeter uh, 2.8 lens, which has a really uh, bowl shaped front element, uh, to this 100 to 400. So I can cover the complete range with those lenses that are here. So this is my, my standard kit that's always in my backpack. So Let's start with this. This is the 7 to 14. Uh, I've got the 12 to 40 f2.8, uh, the 60 millimeter macro f2.8. You know, see how tiny this is. This is a, a couple of hundred grams. You know, this you, you put this in the side of your bag, and uh, you can always take it with you. So a really nice addition. Um, I think my most used lens, the 40 to 150 f2.8. I just love this lens. It's so good and uh, so sharp. Um, yeah, one of my, my best investments. Um, then the 100 to 400. Uh, this is the only not pro lens uh, that is here, but it is weather sealed and everything. Uh, it's f5 to f6.3. Uh, so really nice focal range, especially for those longer uh, images. And uh, this year I also added this 300 millimeter prime f4, uh, which is a pro lens. And all these lenses uh, fit in my one backpack that I always carry with me. And the, the, the weight of it isn't even that high. So um, uh, if you uh, combine it all, it, it's not that I'm carrying too much gear or, uh, or anything. It's just uh, perfect for me to, uh, to walk around with. And that's what I like about it. I don't have to decide in the morning, am I going to take a landscape, a macro, or a bird, or an animal, or something in the distance, or something very close. I know that I have every range covered with the uh, equipment that I have with me. And it also brings other benefits, like at the moment you are uh, using a large zoom lens uh, in a uh, yeah, golden hour situation, for example, you can really isolate that, that piece of light that you're aiming for and i've been uh, i've been out with friends with uh, full frame uh, sensors and they always say to me i can crop back to the reach that you have with your uh, micro four thirds gear but you don't have the light the, the light meter in the camera adjusts itself to what it sees in your frame and if you have more information in your frame so a wider image uh, the camera starts adjusting to those colors to those um, yeah, beautiful golden uh, colors that are created. And that's just the big ability of this because I can zoom that far in a lot of cases. I can just get uh, amazing results with, with atmospheric images, which I really, really like. So let me take you along on a couple of occasions here uh, where I um, 
went into nature and uh, where I used this uh, the maximum. So uh, days where I shot a wide angle and I shot a very large telephoto shot uh, in the same situation. So for example, uh, this first image that I have right here, uh, this is uh, uh, shot with a seven. I don't, don't know for sure, let's have a look. Uh, this is 19 millimeters, sorry. <laughs> um, but it was very crowded there. I wanted to shoot this uh, tree here, but there was a lot of people sitting on the water's edge here. So what I did, uh, I walked away, I'm, I was done with it, with all those people around. And I started using, um, I think this was the 100 to 400, uh, it's this one. And I shot this at 269 millimeters on the other side of this uh, pond. And nobody saw it, but because I had this lens available, uh, I noticed this uh, image, which I'm still uh, really happy about. So um, this is one of the examples that I want to show you. Uh, that same uh, morning, uh, I also shot this red robin here in this uh, frozen uh, bush with some beautiful light on the back. And this is shot at 400 millimeters, so all the way out with this lens. So this is an, an 800 millimeter full frame equivalent shot. And I could even add these teleconverters, you know, I have a 1.4 and a two times teleconverter, uh, which especially work great on the 300 millimeter and the 40 to 150 here. Uh, the image quality, in my opinion, isn't that bad when using them. Of course, your f stops get a little bit uh, slower, but uh, uh, some cases I'm just totally fine with it, especially when I'm shooting from a tripod and uh, shooting a wide uh, landscape. This is also an example um, where I started using uh, a wider angle uh, lens. So this is shot at uh, 40 millimeters. Um, and at the same day, uh, I think uh, maybe a couple of hours later, I shot this image with the 300 millimeter this one and the 1.4 teleconverter. So I zoomed all the way into, uh, I think this is shot at 420 millimeters, I think, and uh, just isolating these trees. And there was snow being blown over all the time. So I could really isolate this and create this really minimalistic, abstract, maybe high key uh, kind of image. This is the same situation. This is a seven millimeter shot of those trees. And uh, I was uh, playing around there with, with that lens, trying to catch a really nice shot, but it didn't really work because I thought the foreground wasn't good enough. But when I looked behind me, or I think it was even when I looked in my uh, vlogging camera, I saw some beautiful light in the far distance uh, behind me. Um, I put on the 100 to 400 on a tripod and I shoot the shot didn't shoot, I shot this image at the 218 millimeters. So another example of going from the widest angle that I had to the, the biggest lens that I had um, to get this reach. And if you would zoom out more, uh, the camera would, wouldn't adjust to these colors uh, that much as, uh, as it did in this specific situation. Here another good example. Um, I was just uh, waiting for this uh, uh, shot to take this uh, wide angle shot here. And I was uh, a little bit early before sunrise. So I had to wait uh, some time before the, the best light uh, uh, appeared. So I thought to myself, I have to entertain myself a little bit here. So I put on the 100 to 400 and I started to concentrate on birds. And there were this, uh, these little uh, fish thieves were flying around there. So I started uh, uh, photographing these birds to, uh, to kill some time. And that's that's the nice thing, you know, I, I don't have to shoot a landscape all the time, but I also have the ability to shoot a bird or a deer or whatever animal I, uh, I come across, because I know I have the capability to take these things with me in my backpack. Here, another example of a, a wide angle shot in uh, Austria uh, of the, the Alpenglow. This is a 13 millimeter shot, so a really wide, uh, wide angle. It's shot with the 12 to 40 uh, millimeter lens that I have. And uh, from exactly the same spot, I also shot uh, this image, which, which is about 100 millimeters, I think, which was on the other side of the lake after the sun had risen all, uh, all up. Um, a couple of minutes later, I also took this specific image, and this is a little bit further away. This is, uh, uh, 85, this is 85 millimeters, actually. It's not, not even that far away, I think. But uh, yeah, so just some catching this beautiful uh, light uh, in this situation, just a really nice uh, image and a really nice uh, location. And this is probably uh, one of my best uh, 
uh, yeah, examples. Uh, I was standing here shooting this uh, purple header, but as you can see, uh, there was no clouds in the sky and it was really hard light when the sun got up and everyone next to me, there were about 20 to 30 photographers standing uh, around me, uh, left and right. And when the sun was up, everyone left because it wasn't the image that we were hoping for. It was uh, not nice enough. But this is shot with the 12 to 40 lens. So at that moment, I thought to myself, what if I, what if I wait and what if I zoom in to this specific area here in the bottom where that little bit of fog is concentrated. And then I put on the 40 to 150. So uh, that's, that's this lens. And you can see that it uh, created a very different dynamic in this image because the camera adjusted to the light that I could see, uh, that I couldn't see with my own eyes, but the camera started adjusting to it, creating this magical glow coming from the side uh, into this image. But then I thought, I can even do better than this. What if I only zoom into this particular part here, which I... Uh, yeah, really seemed to like at that time. So I think I did one step to the left to create some more space between this bush and this bush here. And then I mounted the 100 to 400 lens. And it created one of my most uh, magical shots, I think, that I ever took. So if you look at this, it's just the area that I just showed you, but the camera really adjusted to the kind of light that was in that situation. And I even came across... Uh, uh, two other photographers that were standing next to me later that morning. And so I said to them, why didn't you stay around for uh, after that first shot uh, to catch something like this? And they said, well, I don't have a zoom lens with me. I only have wide angle lenses. And that is the nice thing. Of course, you, you can carry it around with uh, other sensors, but you are carrying around a lot of gear and a lot of weight. And not not everybody is made for that, you know. I, I'm definitely not made for uh, for that uh, kind of photography. Uh, here another example of a wide angle shot uh, at this beautiful uh, uh, tarn, I think they call it in uh, in Scotland, uh, with this beautiful reflection. And I started noticing there were some trees here on the right side of this image, uh, here on the side, with this beautiful uh, colored fog just over uh, the water's edge there. And I just decided to put on the 300 millimeter, uh, this one, F4, just lay on the ground. And I shot this totally different image um, just because I had the reach to, to know that I could uh, find this composition. Um, I think that's the, the main example. I just, I'm just able to find these compositions because I know I'm able to shoot those compositions. You know, if you're... Uh, uh, a full frame photographer and for example you're shooting at uh, 400 millimeters um, you're, you're not looking at those things you're, you're not looking and thinking i can crop this back uh, it's much more difficult and i know that i can reach certain things that other people don't uh, which is in my opinion the, the far biggest benefit of this uh, system and in fact i don't have much negatives about the system if there's one negative yes the dyn uh, how do you say it? Uh, the, the blurriness of the image, the depth of field is a little bit less with, uh, with the Micro Four Thirds system. But as a landscape photographer, I want a lot of depth of field. So for me, it isn't a, a disadvantage, it's an advantage because I get a lot more uh, yeah, in focus of my image. And for that one time that I'm shooting a bird or anything, you have this beautiful tool in Lightroom at the moment where you can blur a background. And most of the times it isn't even necessary because the background is usually far enough away to create this nice blurry background. But uh, uh, if you uh, don't have that situation, you can easily do it in post-processing. So here another example of a wide angle shot in uh, Scotland that I shot with my, uh, with my son last summer. Uh, a couple of minutes later, I shot this a bird with the 100 to 400 over here. Um, yeah, it was sitting there. Uh, no, I'm, I'm lying to you. I shot it with the 300 millimeter and the teleconverter. I think the 1.4. And um, yeah, maybe in this situation, you can see that the background isn't as blurry as uh, I would have wanted it to be. But this is an, an older image, I think with... Uh, the current Lightroom um, updates, I can really easily uh, make this background disappear 
and uh, let this, this bird stand out of this image. But a couple of minutes later, I shot this image with the 100 to uh, 400. Um, and that's just what I'm telling you. It, I just really like it, you know, changing these lenses, changing from the, the small and what's in front of you to what's in the far distance. Um, you can you can shoot it all, you know, a really, really nice advantage. Here another day in Scotland uh, where I started shooting uh, deers uh, quite close to Glencoe. And uh, I remember shooting this deer with the 300 millimeter over here. A uh, couple of minutes later, I shot this wide angle. Um, I don't, don't even know how this log is called. Um, I don't know what his name is, Loch Ba, I think. I have no idea. But uh, I started noticing a couple of minutes later this beautiful light rays appearing in the far distance here. And I shot this image. And this is one of my, uh, my all-time favorite images. There were two people uh, uh, there with me. And they were looking what I was doing. And they said, what are you doing, man? So I was shooting 16 vertical frames with the 300 millimeter um, from a tripod. And I stitched those together to get this uh, yeah, phenomenal uh, panorama. And they said to me on location, oh, that, that's, not, that's never going to work. That's never going to work. Well, you can see. It does work, but you have to have the right focal length with you to know uh, that you can take a shot like this. And uh, that's just what I, what I like to do. I like to experiment with those uh, long distance shots. And a couple of minutes later on that same day, I shot this uh, image uh, of, of the Glencoe area with a seven millimeter. So I went from 300 uh, to seven millimeters uh, on the same trip again. Here is another example of a wide angle shot uh, to start with. Uh, I think this is shot with the 12 to 40. A couple of minutes later, I noticed this uh, deer and I put on the 40 to 150. It wasn't that far away, I think. Let's have a look. This is 150 millimeters, so it's the 150 all the way out. And um, yeah, I shot this with some beautiful light on it. And just a couple of minutes later, I noticed this caterpillar on this uh, thread hanging uh, in the light with a dark background. And I just put on the macro lens here and uh, I shot this. So it doesn't matter to me which uh, subject I'm photographing because I know I can photograph it all if I would, would want to. Yeah, this is an example of a morning where I was thinking uh, that, that nothing really worked. So um, I started uh, shooting with this image, which is pretty okay, um, but, but no keeper or anything or, or print image, but um, I shot this with the 40 to 150, but nothing seemed to work. I tried this uh, uh, in, in a little bit further image with this light ray. It just didn't work. And I was actually trying, starting to give up on this, uh, on this trip when I saw this buzzard sitting uh, yeah, on top of this tree here. So this is a shot with the 300 millimeter and the two times teleconverter. So this is a 600 millimeter shot. And as you can see, I didn't do anything to the background of this image. Um, it's just really blurry because the bird was sitting really far away from the background. Uh, if the background would have been closer, of course, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been that blurry as it is right now. But uh, yeah, still, I'm just really happy. And that's, that's what my goal is. I'm always, my goal is always to get at least one image that I'm satisfied with on every photography trip that I'm taking. And uh, this allows me to get more of these images because I can shoot multiple different uh, subjects. I can adapt to it. And that's the, the biggest advantage. And uh, let's look at the last image here. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a 12 millimeter shot uh, cropped to a 16 by 9. But I noticed here in the far distance this tree on top of this hill here. And I started putting on the, 400, the 100 to 400 here, zoomed it all the way out. And I shot this image uh, of this silhouette tree with this beautiful uh, painted sky above it. And there were some people there uh, looking on the back of my camera. And the first thing everybody said, oh, I can't reach that. <laughs> and that's the main advantage. And uh, yeah, that's the beauty of this uh, system that, that, that I use. And like I said, everyone should make his own choices. But... Uh, this system definitely suits the way that I like to photograph, you know, just go out there, go with the flow, uh, look at where the light is and try to adjust to it, try to find those images on location. And 
not uh, being uh, expecting anything uh, when you're going from home you know just open for everything and looking at everything and that's the kind of style of photography that i just really uh, seem to like so um, yeah uh, if you're looking at all the other pros uh, i think there aren't much much differences between the other uh, systems and the micro four third system um, i think if you really look at it uh, the the medium format and full frame they, they catch a little bit more of those details but i don't uh, don't see that uh, that much you know i've printed really large prints um, i can zoom into a lot of images and uh, still see all those details if you look here in those in, at those houses uh, those details are here in those images and how far do you want to zoom in how big do you want to print uh, i've got prints from one meter 60 by 90 uh, upstairs which are perfectly fine because what's happening if you're printing large the first thing you do when you look at it is take a step back and um, if you step back at it uh, you're seeing the same amount of pixels there so that's my honest opinion and uh, everyone can have his own uh, uh, opinion of course but for me the negatives of uh, carrying around all this big gear don't uh, over uh, how do you say that in English uh, they don't convince me enough to to go to that you know for me this is such an advantage that I am willing to uh, to risk a little bit of detail loss which I don't even notice uh, in my images so uh, for me this is definitely a keeper and I'm I'm not thinking about moving to another system uh, anywhere soon so uh, I'm really comfortable and happy in my Micro Four Thirds photography uh, kit at the moment so I hope you uh, enjoyed this video, um, hope you liked uh, the images, uh, if you do uh, please uh, leave a comment underneath this video, let me know what you think about your uh, camera, why you use your system, I'm always interested to see uh, what other people do and uh, why you use it, um, why, you, why you chose that specific thing, what, what's your advantage of it, why you, why you decided to use that. So uh, once again, hope you liked the video, please push the thumbs up button if you do and um, there's a subscribe button underneath this video. If you push that and select all on the notification bell, you will get a message when I release uh, my next video. So that will probably be uh, this Sunday. If I'm looking at the schedule, this is going to be on Thursday. So next video is uh, this Sunday. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.